Hallelujah. So good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Appreciate your being here. Uh, I say this just about every place that I go on some ordinary day, just like the day Jesus is coming again. Yes. I know that we are the generation living closest to his return uh, than any church age, but it seems like the, the majority of the church is looking for him less uh, than generations that live farther from his coming. Uh, but he is coming Amen. again. Amen. Songs have uh, stirred me tonight, uh, made me want to worship him. I was watching uh, Brother Corey on those drums. and uh, He's playing the drums and singing, just rearing back, letting it flow. And that made me want to worship God. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm glad you're here. And uh, I was uh, alone with the Lord on the balcony today, about 13 uh, stories up. Uh, you know, they, I noticed in that elevator that uh, when you're counting floors, if you look at that digital uh, display, it doesn't say 13, it goes from 12 to 14. I told uh, Brother Sister Hunt, my wife, I said, I don't care what they say, that's still the 13th floor. <laughs> Amen. But was along with the Lord uh, today, uh, preparing for tonight, I believe. Uh, that I found the mind of the Lord. And if you'll go with me for, for the next little while, I'll endeavor to share with you uh, what I believe uh, is his mind. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32. Turn there with us, please. Thank you uh, so much for uh, the food and uh, for the provisions, the uh, living quarters, all that you uh, are doing uh, to make us feel comfortable and at home. I appreciate it. We appreciate that so very very much. Uh, I don't know how many are, are here who were here last night, uh, but if you'll, if you'll ha help me preach, I tell folks I think I preach better when, when congregation helps me, but if that's not so, don't tell me till after Friday night. <laughs> uh, let me live, live under the misconception. Uh, but I do believe, I do believe that uh, what I'll share with you is the mind of God, the young preacher from back home, uh, texted me today and, and said, I'm praying for uh, the service tonight. My response to him was, I feel, I feel the excitement for the service, and I'm just praying that God makes the excitement reality or expectation. And so I said, I just pray God turns the expectation into reality. Uh, I said to you last night, one of the last things I said in preaching is, I preach to get folks in an altar. I assume. That's what every, every preacher does. Uh, but I preach. Uh, I do preach for a response, not necessarily for you to say amen. I do appreciate that. Uh, but the response that I preach for is that folks lay hold of what I say, believe it enough, they get in an altar and allow God a chance uh, to deal with them. Uh, tonight will be one of those nights. If you'll go with me, the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32, if you're not infirmed in your body, able to stand, would you do so all over this house? Uh, Deuteronomy 32 verse 11 and then the A portion of verse 12. Uh, you could probably quote that but Moses wrote uh, the book of Deuteronomy as an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. Notice verse 12. So the Lord alone did lead him. I believe that God simply saying, that's how I deal with my people. Amen. That haven't been said. And I don't want you to draw up here. I don't want you to hang up on me. Uh, the title isn't as bad as it sounds. But the title of my message is simply, when God busts up your nest. Amen. When God, and I can look at y'all and tell that don't mean a blessed thing. <laughs> what that means though, you're going to have to hold on with me for about two hours. Make it, make, make it an hour. May please don't matter. Help us preach. You may be seated. Sit down. Don't sit down on me. Please help me for the next little while. If we want to leave like the eagles, and what's in my mind is the rapture, if we want to leave like the eagles, then we must live like the eagles. Man is king of the earth, and oxen are king of domestic animals, domestic beasts. Lions are 
king of the wild beasts, and eagles are king among the birds. At the center of the message I'll share with you and the passage uh, that I read uh, tonight, at the center of all that is the image of the nest. Uh, you know, you might say, Brother Jones, I was thinking the eagle, well, you're right, but for the sake of this message, uh, it really has to do uh, with the nest. Eagles live and nest unlike any other bird Amen. on the planet. Eagles could not survive without a nest. Right. They, they'd soon become extinct. They uh, could not. They could not make it. Eagles are the hillbillies and the mountain folk. They are the highlanders of yeah. the bird kingdom. Uh, they, the species, some species anyway, live and lay eggs in places that, uh, and, and at heights that other birds uh, don't. So nests are vital to them. They have to have those nests. As important, though, as nests are to eagles, eagles are not primarily nesters. Right. They are primarily flyers. Better yet, they are soarers. Right. They normally spend four to six hours a day in flight. That haven't been said. They are not nesters that fly. They are flyers that nest. Amen. Recently, you know, well, I say recently, but I, I've seen some things in uh, verse 11 been some time ago now. I saw some things that I've not seen, things that reveal or mirror God's dealing, uh, you know, with his own. Uh, at some point, the eagle in verse 11, Deuteronomy 32, at some point, that eagle discovered she is an eagle. At some point, she did understand that. I, I know that, that she doesn't know the word eagle, but she knows what she was. She knew that. Uh, you know, at some point, she, she understood that. She was different from every other bird. She had a great abilities, and as a mother, her mother had done to her, she would do to her young. It starts, though, with the choosing of a mate. She does the choosing. Uh, now, somebody asked me one time, Brother Jones, where, uh, wh who do you study behind? Where, where do you get your information? I tell them, I fish a lot of streams and I milk a lot of cows. Amen. So I borrowed heavily to present this to you tonight. But, uh, you know, it, it, it starts with choosing a mate and, and, and she does the choosing. Uh, you know, choosing a mate starts actually with the game. Uh, it is a game of little things with lasting results. It starts with a stick and a rock game. Uh, whenever a male eagle comes along and he, he wants to court, uh, you know, she will start a game with him. Uh, she'll take up a stick. She'll soar uh, about 8,000 feet according to one source. Uh, you know, and the male eagle will follow her to that height. At some point, she will drop that stick. And that male eagle will go after it. He'll catch it. And then he'll bring it down to the earth. Uh, you know, she'll do this again and again. Uh, eventually, uh, she will take something larger, maybe something equal in size to herself or even larger, and she might take it to about 5,000 feet, and she'll drop it, and he'll follow that. He'll, he'll grab hold of whatever she dropped, and he'll bring it to the ground. Uh, well, the reason for this is she knows that she's going to have to teach her young to fly. And she's going to have to drop them. Uh, and once they are dropped, uh, he's going to have to catch those young. And if he does it, uh, she, he's, not the, he's not the eagle for her or her eaglets. If he doesn't go after everything she drops, and if he doesn't catch everything she drops, he fails and she drives him away and has nothing else to do with him. Uh, you know, there are two sides to God. I do need to tell you tonight, there are two sides to God. One side of God, I hope you don't hold your breath here, but one side of God will drop you in the middle of a flying lesson. All right. The other side of God will catch you before you hit the ground. He'll, he'll drop you 
in the middle of a flying lesson and he'll catch you before you hit the ground. Once a maid is chosen, they build a nest, lay eggs, they hatch them, and then they start a family. When Moses was writing of these verses, he said, as an eagle stirreth up her nest. Uh, you know, mama, uh, when it's time to teach them babies, she'll make two visits to that nest. Uh, you know, I want you to notice what, what God said. The Bible said, as an eagle stirreth up her nest. That's important. Uh, as an eagle stirreth up her nest. If that, that nest is never the nest of those eaglets. Right. Never belongs to them. It's her nest. The Bible said as she stirreth up her nest. Well, what happens is there comes a time after she has nourished them and nurtured them and fed them and protected them. There comes a day that mama's acting different. Uh, there comes a day that she's going to wake everything in that nest up. Oh, they might have been wide awake, but she's going to wake them up. Something is about to happen. The word stirreth up means to wake up, to rouse, to excite, to incite. Mama's acting different. And, and, and today, today, everything in that nest knows there's something different about mama. There will come a time in your walk with God. You know when, when you grow enough, when you sit under a man long enough, when you sit under a teacher long enough and your teeth are grown out and your wing now, it's, it's time to grow up. God's going to start dealing with you. It's time to grow. And so God will start dealing with you. And there'll come a time in your walk with God that God begins to stir you. God will awaken you. You were created, chosen, born again, washed in the blood to do more than occupy 18 inches of pew. And so there comes a time when God becomes animated and God's going to stir his people. She's not just stirring the nest, materials and components. She's stirring up eaglets. Shout with me somebody. She something's up and she lets everything in that nest know things are about to change around here. Well, that's what God will do. God will start stirring stuff in your life because God is not going to let you just lay around that nest the rest of your Christian experience. She's not just waking them up from a night's sleep. She's waking them up to a vital reality. She is placing them on notice. She's rousing and exciting and inciting them. Uh, you know they're stirred because she's stirred. They get excited because she's excited. That's what will happen in the life of every believer. When God is stirred, he's going to stir you and me. When God is about to change direction, he's going to stir everything in the nest. She brought the trouble that is the first lesson in flight. Hallelujah. You know when things start happening, our tendency will be to say, well, you know the devil... The devil don't even know the combination of what you're about to go through. All right, all right. It ain't the devil bringing that to your nest. God is bringing that to your nest. Y'all shout tomorrow, I'll preach tonight. Mama's first visit whenever uh, she comes to that nest. And uh, you know that nest may be six to ten feet wide. It may wa weigh as much as uh, two tons, four thousand pounds. But the first visit, she comes over and rips all of the soft, warm lining out. Everything that's comfortable. I, I know you've heard much of this before. Uh, but her first trip is to take out all the comfort. When God gets ready to move you, one of the first things he'll do is make you uncomfortable. If you are uncomfortable, then chances are you're thinking, maybe I can't stay where I am very much longer. And so she rips out all of the lining. Everything soft, everything warm, everything comfortable. It's got to go. Eagles have two main accessories or gifts from God, and they've got to be able to use both of them. The first is wings. The second gift from God is talons. Those are special strong feet with sharp claws. Uh, and the eagles got to realize that God has equipped them uh, with those things. With all that fur and that lining going out of that nest, those eaglets now start standing on the framework. Yeah. All right. they, they've never done that before. All they've ever done is lay around, eat, sleep, 
play. Now y'all real quiet. Either you're really listening or Yeah. When she rips all of that lining out, there's no place to lay down. So now they're having to stand on the framework. All of the branches, everything uh, you know that made that nest in this, minus the comfort, now they're having to stand on that framework. What they're doing, uh, you know what they're doing is, uh, you know, a lot of folks, a lot of folks uh, want to, well, let, let, me, let me just say that. Uh, before I say that, let me say something else. All they've been doing now is they've been laying around eating, uh, you know, they've been sleeping, they've been enjoying the comforts. Uh, you know they got breakfast in bed and lunch in bed and dinner in bed and they've been protected and they've been kept. And so all they've done is lay around. What's happening is when they are standing now on that framework for the first time in their lives, they are learning to stand. That's part of the reason that God will rip the comfort out from under us so that we can learn to stand. Listen to me. God's going to teach you to fly, but a lot of folks want to fly when they can't even stand. I can't. There are a lot of folks, they want to fly. Oh, they want to preach. They want to travel. They think it's all glamour. They want to preach to crowds. They want to see folks fall out on the floor and get up and do it again. All I'm trying to tell you, folks, is you can't fly until first you can stand. God is going to teach you how to stand before he ever teaches you how to fly. Can anybody shout amen? Yes, sir. The first thing God's going to teach him, he's going to teach him how to stand. You know, all of these all of these weeks, however long it took him, by the time when mama got ready to teach him how to fly, all they got are big mouths and weak feet. All right, all right. Come on, preach. Come on, preach. I know, y'all don't have none of that in Alabama. But, but the Tar Heel State's full of them. Big mouths and weak feet. But I'm just saying to you, here tonight, saints of God, there comes a time when people have got to learn how to stand. I remember when I was growing up, I was still in high school, real shy, but my mama would, she'd take my car and have it worked on, whatever had to be done, mama would take care of it. But when I moved out, didn't have nobody do that stuff. I had to stand on my own feet. I can remember when all that happened, uh, Brother Hunt. I'm just saying, uh, you can sit under a good man and you can sit under good ministry and you can get good meat every week and you can get plenty to drink every week. The only backside, of a, you know, the only uh, backstop to that or downside to that is if you eat everything he gives you, you don't grow. And if you don't grow, there'll come a time that God's going to force you to move to the next level. He's going to force you into the next thing. Uh, well, uh, you know, standing on that framework uh, does a number of things. Number one, it develops strength in that, in that eagle's talons in its legs. The second thing it does is it develops stability. See, real stability uh, won't make you run from church to church, every church in Foley and every church in the county. Uh, you, you, get, you, you develop stability. And then there's another thing. It helps that eagle develop balance. Uh, you know, one of the, one of the worst enemies of a, of a young Christian uh, is not having balance. Uh, you can believe everything that comes along. I was a young Christian. I was hungry. I, I wanted to know. I wanted to learn. Uh, you know, and early on, I bought into some of that uh, Kenneth Copeland and Kenneth Hagen, uh, but I kept growing. After a while, I learned a few things. After a while, I, I learned that everything I learned wasn't gospel. Shout with me, somebody. Y'all yeah. shout tomorrow. That's all right. Uh, but what I did, brother, when I was growing, I started developing balance. I started learning what's biblical and what ain't. Who to believe and who not to believe. Shout with me, somebody. I'm just saying uh, that God will force you to the place you develop balance in your walk, in your stance, in your faith. Anybody hear what I'm saying to you tonight? So standing on that framework, uh, they're, they're developing strength and stability and balance. In time, uh, when those, those legs and talons are strong, mama will make 
a second visit to that nest. This time, when mama comes over, she throws the whole framework over the side. All of that is gone now. Nothing to stand on. They've already developed strength and balance. And now it's time for them to learn how to fly. They, they say that the average lifespan of an eagle in the wild, uh, you know, is, uh, is, is 30 years. Uh, up to up to 70 years sometime. And in that span of time, listen to me, nests come and go. Right. Right. Nests are not permanent uh, for the eagle. They are only temporary. A nest for the eagle is only a bridge leading to the next dimension in eagle existence. What happens is when mama throws that nest over the side, mama's saying, I will tolerate no props. I will tolerate no shortcuts. I will tolerate no substitutes. Y'all shout tomorrow. I will I'll tolerate no substitutes. Mama is not the reason she throws that nest over the side if she is not going to raise a handicap. Yeah. You know that some, some pastors want that whole congregation just leaning on them. The churches that have been built around men. Those men moved on or died. And the churches fizzled out. Because everything was built around that man. All I'm saying to you here tonight, saying to God, is in the life of an eagle, a nest is only a temporary thing. There comes a time when that eagle has got to learn, this ain't mine. This belongs to mama. She can do whatever she wants to with it. I promise you, the Holy Ghost will do that in your walk with God. He'll bring you to the place that your dependence is in God and not in your pastor. In God and not your Sunday school teacher in God and not your regional bishop. Anybody hear what I'm saying to you? God will put you in a place you have to trust Him. You gotta trust Him. Well, she's not going to raise a handicap, so she gets rid of that nest. He's with the Lord now, but we'd have a pastor uh, in our state preached a message been a number of years ago now. The title of his message was When All the Props Are Gone. Right, right. God will take away every prop right. because God ain't going to raise a handicap. Amen. He's not going to raise a handicap. After mama, after mama throws that nest over the side, she begins to do something she hadn't done before. The Bible says she will spread abroad her wings. She's showing them something they don't need in a little while. Amen. Maybe sooner than they expect. Holy Ghost will start showing you ahead of time something you're going to need. He'll, he'll start demonstrating to you. You'll see it. Everybody else may not, but you'll see it vividly. He'll show you what you ought to do. She's spreading abroad her wings. She's showing them what she wants them to do. She's showing them what they got to do if they're going to live and if they're going to survive. The Holy Ghost is no different. When she spreads abroad her wings, she's saying to them in essence, I've made it because I learned I'm not a nester. I made it because I learned I'm not a nester. I'm here because I learned I am an eagle and eagles fly. Anybody hearing what I'm saying tonight? The first lesson in flight begins with a lesson in nests. And all that says is nests are temporary. You are going to be around longer than the nest. That's good. She's beginning a lesson in nesting. Oh, that nest over the side that simply says, you're no nesters. Amen. Some folks will settle in churches and stay there all of their lives. I'm not saying anything wrong with that. But you're not a nester. Amen. You're not a nester. She throws that nest over the side and it simply says to them, this 
was my nest. You're too old to be in my nest. You've nested here long enough. Amen. Nests are temporary. They come and they go. Now you have got to build your own nest. And you can never do that until you learn the next lesson. And the next lesson is flight. Flying is permanent. It is lifelong. Nests will come and go in the life of an eagle. But an eagle, once it learns to fly, it becomes a permanent thing. Shout with me, somebody. Once you learn to, to soar in the Holy Ghost, once you learn to yeah. trust the Spirit and walk in the Spirit, that is a lifelong thing. Churches may come and go and pastors may come and go and congregations may change. But a walk in the Spirit is a permanent thing when you learn the voice of God, when you learn the heartbeat of God, that becomes a permanent thing. That's right. That's good. That's good well, what, what, what she's doing when she when she's spreading out her wings is she's remedying a syndrome them babies have had ever since they came out of them eggs. She is remedying what one preacher called folded wing syndrome. All right. Oh, you go ahead, Pastor. Come on. Come on. Need somebody to teach Sunday school. Oh, you go ahead, Pastor. Right. Right. Y'all get the message, don't you? Oh, yeah. Folded wing. They've been that way. Ever since day one, Mama now is showing them what she wants them to do. Come on. Yeah. Right. Get those wings oh, away from your body. Yeah. You, you've done this all your life. When I brought you food, you kept your wings folded. When I shielded you in the storm, you kept your wings folded. But now this nest is gone. If you get another one, you're going to build it. If you're going to build it, you're going to have to get your wings from under yourself. Shout with me, somebody. There comes a time you need to be full of the Holy Ghost. You need to get your wings away from your body. And you need to learn the next dimension in the life of a believer. Folded yeah. wing syndrome. She is trying to remedy that. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you something that's absolutely profound. An eagle can't fly until it opens his wings. You never thought that, did you? Some of the greatest truths are some of the simplest truths. And this is what mama's doing. You got to get those wings away from your body. Got to get your wings away from your body. Stand up. Open. That, that's exactly what she's trying to show. The Bible said she then fluttereth over her young. That, that means to brood, to move, to shake. Right. Mama is trying to show them. Let, let, let me just make this statement. Did you know it's impossible for a bird to fly without movement? Right. You watch a bird. Amen. Or it flies, it's going to move first. Squat and leap. Jump off a limb. An eagle jumps off a rock. Impossible for a bird to take flight without first moving. Right. Amen. She's fluttering. She's brooding. In essence, she's showing them you this will do you no good until and unless you move. I, I'm telling you tonight, in the fear of God, there's got to be something inside you that moves you. Listen, 
They say that Abraham Lincoln, there was a man, a preacher in his time, Abraham Lincoln loved to go hear him or watch him preach. He said he preaches like he's fighting bees. There's something in him that, that moves him. And so Abraham Lincoln liked to go listen to him. Uh, you might know, I don't know if you do. Uh, there's a preacher and singer in South Carolina. His name is Donald Deal. You might have met him at Brother Larry Hem's church. I, I told Brother Deal, I said, Brother, I like to watch you sing. All right. He can sing good, but I like to watch him. He's all over the place. He's swinging his arms. And uh, you know, he's jumping up and down. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. There's something about this Holy Ghost that will make you move. There's something about him that will make you shout. It's something about him. It will put life into you. It will shake you. If before you take flight, something about that life inside you that's got to move. If you're going to evangelize a pastor, if you're going to be a missionary, it doesn't matter. Something has got to move you to find somebody on a shout with me in this house. I've watched folks in orders and I knew they ain't never going to get no Holy Ghost. I mean, the face so close to the carpet, the breath will stain that carpet. Yeah. They ain't going to get no Holy Ghost. Right. Ain't nothing moving. moving. They're just down there the whole time. Right. Something has got to move in here. Yeah. Something's got to animate you. Yeah. Something's got to cause you to move. you got to believe that if he fills you, he's going to send you. But you've got to believe that he's going to fill you. you. You you can't just get down, and you know, and look at the carpet and count the fibers and expect to be filled. Something in here has got to animate you to the point you're sure he's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Come on. Yeah. Right, brother. That's how you get I don't know whether to run or stand here and take it. Well, she fluttered over her young movement is necessary to flight. She'll stand on the edge of that rock and she'll scream and then she'll launch out into that nothingness. Yeah. Amen. They're watching her. She's just showing them what she wants them to do. Amen. Holy Ghost will never ask you to do anything that he doesn't show you what he wants you to do. Amen. Hallelujah. That's it. And then the Bible said this. The Bible said she taketh them. That, that simply means she laid hold of them. She seized them. Uh -huh. She took them away. She, I don't know how you say it in Alabama, but at home we say, she snatched them up. Yeah. Yeah. You ever told your youngins, I'm about to snatch you up? Yeah. Only everybody shot it one time, but I'm going to tell you, the Holy Ghost will snatch you up. Hallelujah. Yeah. I don't mean it's about to tan you. I am telling you, He'll snatch you up if he's fluttered over you, if he spread it up, if he has spread over all his wings, yeah. if he's taken comforts away. The Holy Ghost will not leave you on a cold rock the rest of your life. He'll snatch you up. He'll take you. Listen, he will take you to school. Uh, this is what she did. She she took him up. Now she never asked him, do you want to go? She never asked him, are you interested in this next level? Are you interested in this next dimension? It wasn't optional. They had no choice. It was mandatory. Anybody here? What I'm saying to you, she could not make them learn, but she could take them to school. She couldn't make them learn, but she would put them through the class. She couldn't make them learn, but she would send them through the course. Anybody hear me? The Holy Ghost can make you obey, but he can put you through the school. He can put you through the school. 
the one thing they must learn. Maybe it's the second thing, first thing's about the nest. Second thing they've got to learn is flight. I learned several things about flight in an eagle. First of which is this. Flight in an eagle is an innate ability. It's born into them. Right. Amen. Yeah. Only problem is they don't know it. That's right. Oh, come on. Right. Come on. Come on. Born with wings and talons. And they don't know they can fly. They can fly. Flight, number one, is an innate ability. Number two, it is a taught ability. I'm going to take them babies. I don't know if you ever heard of Bobby Thompson, Baptist preacher. He probably preached more on the eagle than any other preacher. Probably studied it more than any other living preacher. But Bobby Thompson said, after spending several nights on that cold rock, said, well, Mama comes over one morning and she'll take them babies one by one and they'll crawl up on her back. He said, they'll say, oh, Mama, you're so warm. This rock's been so cold. Where you been, Mama? All right. And then Mama will take flight. She'll mount up. And then he said, she will just flip over talons to the sky. And they're hanging on. What are you doing, Mama? You know what she just did? She just turned their world upside down. Amen. Y'all ain't going to holler amen, but I got, to, I got to tell you something. The Holy Ghost has a way of turning your world upside down. The only thing that England has to hold on to when its world is to turned upside down is mama. When the Holy Ghost turns your world upside down, the only thing you got to hold on to is the Holy Ghost. Shout with me, somebody. He knows how to make you clean. He knows how to make you hold on. Shout with me, somebody. When the Holy Ghost turns your world upside down, you're not thinking about pastor. You're not thinking about spouse. You're not thinking about church. You're thinking, how can I hold on to him and not fall apart? I haven't asked you this all week. Now, I know I just started last night. Look at somebody and say, the Holy Ghost will turn your world upside down. Go ahead. If you're looking at me, you're not doing it. Look at somebody and tell them, the Holy Ghost will turn your world upside down. Flying's a taught ability. It's innate. It's taught. And then flying is a learned ability. I mean, if you know, just because it's taught doesn't mean it's learned. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's good. Mama had to put them babies through that. She'd get out yonder and flip upside down. And she'd drop them. Oh, wow, daddy's up yonder circling around. And when she drops them, they fall. Yeah. And he goes after them. See, they don't know he can fly downward faster than they can fall. He can fly 200 miles an hour down. They're hollering. They're squawking. All that lesson on that rock when Mama fluttered over. Where the bone that brought their wings, her wings. They forget all about that. They scared to death. So dad has to come down and get him, take him back to that rock. The day may be over, but the class is not. All right. Amen. Mama will do that again and again and again. You might ask the Holy Ghost, when is this going to be over? All right. He'll say, when you get it. Y'all a little quiet. I hope that's because you're listening. Listen, flight is an innate ability. It's a taught ability. It's a learned ability. But in the eagle, it is a discovered ability. Amen. Don't matter how many times they see mama when they're flying, or falling rather, they still don't know they can fly. 
And usually it's discovered in a time of crisis. All right. Come on. If you don't think that's crisis, then I'm going to take you about 8,000 feet and drop you. And somehow or other during one of those falls, they just do this number. Yeah. Right. And they're not falling like they were falling. All right. Come on. They discover that they can fly yeah. in a time of crisis. Right. Amen. Oh, yes. Yes. Amen. Come on. Praise God. Come on. God, why? Why this trouble? Why this long night? Why this difficulty? Because he knows in time you are going to discover that you can fly. Hallelujah. You're going to discover you can fly. And then the last thing about flight is this. It is a honed Ability. When the babies first learn to fly, they can't fly like mama. That's right. Give them time. They can make cuts and bends as good as mama and daddy put together. Flight is a honed ability. Once you discover that you can reach staggering heights in the power of this Holy Ghost. You learn, you hone the ability Amen. to follow the Spirit. Hallelujah. Right. To learn the wind of the Spirit, the traits of the Spirit. Anybody here? Amen. I am saying to you, yeah. it is a honed ability. Right. Perspective changes when those eaglets learn to fly. All they've seen all their lives is whatever they can see from that nest. But once they learn to fly, Amen. perspective changes. Hallelujah. When saints get to the place, they learn they can traverse in the spirit. I'm telling you, perspective changes. Ain't nothing God can't do. Ain't no place God can't go. Ain't nothing God don't know. Ain't no language he can't talk. He can talk the language of tears and he speaks it fluently. He wrote the language of tears. Anybody hear what I'm saying? I'm in that closet. Don't nobody know why I'm there, but the Holy Ghost does. And he shows up and he helps me say what I have problems saying. Shout with me. Uh, when you learn, when you learn how to matriculate in the spirit, yeah. when you learn, uh, when you learn that, uh, you know, he may not talk often, but when he does, the, uh, the denomination is astronomical. Shout with me. Uh, you learn that he may not do a whole lot of talking, but when he does, he says a lot in a few words. I'm just saying to you, uh, you know, there comes a time in every life that God does his best, even sometimes when it's uncomfortable, to move a man from a place he's not sure of God to a place he's convinced of God. The Bible said she bare them on her wings and I want you to notice she dropped them repeatedly but she never threw them away. God will drop you repeatedly. Always catches you. He'll drop you repeatedly but he'll never just throw you away. I, I, I really am torn as whether or not I ought to say this. Bobby Thompson said it. He said when mom invests all that time in, in, in her young, he said occasionally there will be an eaglet that won't learn the lesson. They just won't learn to fly. She'll drop them. They'll holler. But they won't, they won't try to fly. He said in those cases, 
There'll come a time when mama will take him up and mama will drop him. But this time nobody follows the eaglet down. And he said, that eaglet will fall on that nest that mama threw overboard, over the side, and die on that nest. Mama's just been merciful. She's not going to raise an invalid. If that eaglet never learns to fly, because mama ain't going to feed a grown eagle. If it never learns to fly, it's going to die anyway. And so mama is being merciful because she's not going to raise an invalid. I believe God will deal with us and deal with us and deal with us. But God is not going to raise an invalid. He's not going to raise an invalid. Musicians going to come, singers going to get ready. Mama's not going to raise an eaglet that is a nester that is nest bound. Everything she does from stirring the nest to dropping those babies seem heartless and cruel, but the lesson learned is invaluable. In the most literal of terms, Mama saves that baby's life by taking it to staggering heights and dropping it and taking it to staggering heights and dropping it. When it finally learns to fly, mama has saved that baby's life. Amen. How often we got to do this, God? How many more times do I have to go through this? Until you get it. When God busts up your nest, it is so you learn. There's more to this walk with God than the 30 minute Sunday school that somebody else studied and somebody else prepared and somebody else taught. Right. God busts up your nest is because God is preparing you for maturity and comprehension and performance and demonstration yeah. Amen. that is absolutely impossible unless he took away your nest. Uh, yeah. I preached long enough to quit Earn the right to quit. I'm going to up and quit. But it ain't over. Amen. Amen. However long it's been, however long it's been, 40 minutes, maybe however, however long it's been, it's been me holding this mic, hollering and spitting. What happens next? It's not so much me as it is you. What are you going to do with what you hurt tonight? What are you going to do with what you hurt? You cannot ride your pastor's coattail. Love him, revere him, honor him, pray for him, love him. But if you want to help him, let the Holy Ghost take away the nest and move you to flight. There is another dimension. Stand with me all over this house, would you please? When you have stood, could we come to these altars? Could, could you just move right away uh, into the aisles and into these altars? Let's just present ourselves before God while they begin to sing. Just tell Him. Just, just let Him know, God, I'm, I'm ready for this next dimension. If you're not, just say, God, please, Make me ready for this next level. Make me ready. Help me to understand that nests come and go. The flight is permanent. Hallelujah. Do you come tonight? If you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, 
I promise you the Holy Ghost will nudge you. He'll push you. He'll flutter over you. He wants you to get to the place that He can feel you. He can teach you to fly. Hallelujah.